something that we do uh, differently when we're not together. Some work, some retire, some do volunteer work, some do whatever the case may be. But inevitably, you want to run into something. Uh, so we always want to give you just a little bit more to help you uh, when those situations may or may not come up. Uh, you prepare to deal with them, and then if it's a case where somebody else is dealing with something, uh, you have something to pull and draw on to help them uh, through their problems as well. Not necessarily that you will be dealing with each and every one of these problems, but you may run across somebody who has a need. And people look to us for uh, direction, for spiritual advice, and we ought to be thankful that we serve a God who has countless supplies to deal with whatever comes our way. So this evening, for a few minutes, I want to talk to us from the subject how to navigate uh, stumbling blocks. How to navigate stumbling blocks. In Romans chapter uh, 14, beginning at verse number uh, 1, Romans chapter 14, beginning at verse number 1, uh, Paul says, uh, Him that is weak in the faith deceive ye, but not to doubtful dissipations. For one believe that he may eat all things, and another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath deceived him. He says, Who art thou that judges another man's servant? To his own master he standeth up all up, yea, he shall be holding up, but God is able to make him stand. Then he goes on to say, One man is seen one day above another, another is seen every day of life. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He that regards the day, regard it unto the Lord, he that regards not the day to the Lord, he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord, he giveth God thanks. And he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. But none of us live to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. Whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, and die, we are the Lord's. He says, For this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that it might be Lord both of the dead and living. But then he goes on to say, But why does thou judge thy brother? But why does thou say that not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Verse 13 says, Let us not therefore judge one another anymore, but judge this brother, that no man put a stumbling block or an occasion to fall in his brother's way. The warning here to us, Paul says that we're going to have differences. Amen. And that's okay. There are some things that you like that I may not like. That's okay. We're not talking about things that pertain to our soul. So if you don't like ice cream, that's okay. Brother Bishop still love you, right? But don't be mad at Brother Bishop because he likes him some ice cream. Amen? That's just a difference we have. It has nothing to do with our soul salvation. So we're going to have differences. Some foods that Carter will eat, and I won't eat. Carter eat chitlins. I eat the hog malls. Amen. I eat everything but the chitlins. So we're not going to hate each other, right? We have our differences. But there are some times when we have a situation where someone puts something before us and in many cases, it may not intentionally be designed to trip us up, but nevertheless, it causes us to stumble. And when one stumbles, in most occasions, many occasions, they will also fall. So what Paul here is talking about stumbling blocks, and stumbling blocks are basically something that could be put in front of you to cause you to trip up, stumble, or maybe even fall. What I want to do this evening is just real briefly give you some <laughs> thoughts on how to navigate stumbling blocks. Stumbling blocks are going to come up. Uh, they're going to come up between Christians, believers, and worldly-minded people are non-believers. Uh, they're going to be put up before us by non-believers. Mm -hmm. And then there are going to be occasions, and we hope they be few and seldom, and mostly non-existent, where a fellow Christian will put a stumbling block up in front of you and cause you to stumble or to fall. But no matter how it gets there, there are ways to navigate. Mm -hmm. Paul, ways to make your way through safely. Ways to make your way through without suffering uh, irreparable danger. 
how to navigate stumbling blocks. We are briefly this evening. Uh, let's look at a few scriptures here, and this lesson will be yours. And you may or may not run into a situation this week uh, where this comes in handy, but you may want to call somebody who is faced with something. You may say, you know what? Brother Bishop just preached about that. How to navigate uh, stumbling blocks. So, the first thing that I want us to look at is that uh, I don't want us to be the stumbling block. I want us to be past that stage in our life. There may be times, uh, may have been times in your life as a Christian where you were a stumbling block, where you caused someone to have uh, problems in their Christian walk. You cause someone to run into obstacles in your Christian walk. If you have been there, that's okay, but I don't want you to leave here in that same way. So first, don't you be a stumbling block to anybody. Don't you be a stumbling block to your brother or sister in Christ when it comes to looking at it from the standpoint of this is what God says to do, this is what's right, but I'm going to put something in front of you and cause you to do otherwise. I'm talking about that. Now some stumbling blocks can be good. Some of us could be, can be a good thing, depending on the situation. But as a Christian, when it comes to God's righteousness, don't you be a stumbling block to somebody else. Amen. Believer or non-believer. What are you talking about, Brother, Brother Bishop? Well, I'm trying to teach my neighbor and telling them I'm a member of the Church of Christ and I'm faithful unto death and all this stuff. And then, here I go running to them in the casino. <laughs> Not just one time, when it could have been just accident. But now what have I done? I've become a stumbling block. So here's the thing. Don't you be the stumbling block. Let's go back to the casino, y'all. Let's go back to the casino. You know that there's no reason for you to be in the casino trying to gamble. And here this young Christian is that you've been taking the time to teach and trying to help out, and now they look at you as an example. They well, I would be like brother, sister. And now there you are in the casino. And that young Christian, maybe at that point, don't even know yet. But there you are in the casino. So what are they going to think? It's okay to be in the casino. Ray was in the casino. Ray had been in church 30 years. Can't be the normal being in the casino. No, he wasn't there sampling the food. He was there to try his luck. Amen. So don't you be the stumbling block. That's first and foremost. Secondly, how do I navigate when it comes to stumbling blocks? It's important that when you set out to navigate something, that you can have a clear vision. When you're trying to get from one place to another, it's important to have a clear vision, have a clear focus. You have to be observant. What are you talking about, preacher? Look at Hebrews chapter 12 real quick here. Hebrews chapter 12. In order to be able to navigate stumbling blocks, you have to stay focused and be observant. You have to have your focus on the right thing. You have to have your focus on the right goal. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, the Hebrew writer says, Wherefore, sin, we also are compassed about. With so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Then it says, what in verse 2? Looking, we have to have a clear focus a clear objective, a clear goal, and we have to be very observant. If we're going to avoid uh, stumbling blocks that may be set before us, we have to stay focused. Mm -hmm. If I stay focused on Christ, I am not going to become a fall victim to a stumbling block. This is how it will happen. Why? Because I got my mind on Jesus. If I got my mind on Jesus, that's where my actions are going to be centered towards, that's where my conversation is going to be centered towards, that's where my life, my conduct, everything is going to be centered towards Jesus if that's my focus. So a stumbling block means nothing to me. Why? Because I'm staying focused. If you want to avoid or know how to navigate stumbling blocks, keep your eyes on Jesus. Stay focused on Jesus. Look at unto Jesus. Why would I look unto him? Because he's the author and finisher of our faith. Man. At the end of the day, Jesus paid it. He gave it all. 
right? What should my focus be? On Jesus. Amen. I cannot become victim of a stumbling block if my focus is on Jesus. Now, when I take my eyes off Jesus, right? Y'all know Peter, right? I want to walk on the water. Peter, I want to walk on the water too. Jesus, come on out here. Peter came out, that's what Peter did. Peter walked on water. Amen. Peter walked on water, y'all. But then the scripture says, but then he saw mm -hmm. the wind and the waves. Mm -hmm. And he's looking at the wind and the waves. Do you not know that the human eye can only, can, could not focus itself on one thing at a time? It cannot focus on but one thing at a time. Everything else is going to be blurry. If you focus on something, everything else is going to be blurry around it. Because it can only focus. Peter had us focus on Jesus, and Peter stepped out that boat and walked on that water, but then it said, then he started noticing. Um. What did he do? He took his eyes off. When we take our eyes off Jesus, thus the stomach, the stomach block. There it is, right? When you take your eyes off Jesus, the stomach block now has the power to trip you up. Mm -hmm. And it may have been there all the time. Not something somebody just stuck in front of you, but it may have been there all the time, but when you took your eyes off Jesus, you no longer focus on him. And when you're not focused on him, then you start seeing other things. And there's stumbling blocks, amen? Keep your eyes focused on Jesus if you want to navigate around and over and through stumbling blocks. Let me show you something else. It's important that we understand that we need to stay focused on Jesus. We need to stay observant, keep our mind on him in order to avoid our stumbling blocks. Because, believe it or not, there is not a natural built-in defense for us against stumbling blocks. Mm -mm. There's not a natural, think about it, there's not a natural built-in self-defense for us when it comes to stumbling blocks. Watch this. This way Jeremiah said it. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 10, 23, you'll see what I'm talking about when I get to that. There's not a built-in defense for us. Separate and apart from the Lord, we have no defense against stumbling blocks. Jeremiah said it this way in Jeremiah 10, 22. He says, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. There's no built-in self-defense for us. Amen. There's no built-in defense against stumbling blocks. So what do we have to rely on? Who do we have to rely on? We have to rely on Justin, the Lord. We have to rely on the Lord. There is no just built-in, I'm not going to have any problems in my whole life with, with stumbling blocks. That does not exist in us. <laughs> we have to rely on the Lord. So I stay focused on the Lord. I recognize that that's not a built-in defense mechanism separate and apart from the Lord. I recognize that it is not in me or man to, uh, by myself, to walk and direct my steps. I have to have my ste steps directed by the Lord. I have to depend on His guidance, His direction, His path. Amen. Let me give you this one. Not only do I have to stay focused and observant, not only do I have to uh, recognize and humble myself and understand that I don't have a built-in, automatic, natural defense against stumbling blocks, but God gives us a way around it. Amen. Every time a stumbling block is laid out before you, God gives you a way out. Y'all know where I'm going. First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. We know this one in the middle of the night, so I wake us up, don't we? First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 says, Wherefore let him that think of he stand, take heed, lest he what? Wrong. Fall. There have no temptation taken, there have no temptation taken you with such as is coming to man, but God is faithful, who will not suffer or allow you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to it. There is always a way around. Amen. I don't care if you're faced with a hundred stumbling blocks in a day. I don't care if they come from internal or outside of the church, from individuals. 
There is a way, Sister Priest, around them. God gives us a way. Every time he gives us a way out, he may have a maze there with 500 different stumbling blocks, but there's going to be a way out. Mm -hmm. It's up to us to take it or not. So don't say, well, like Phil Wilson used to say, the devil made me do it. No, no, you have opportunity. You have an opportunity every time. Every stumbling block that comes your way, there's an opportunity. So recognize these three things. Stay focused and observant. You don't have a good uh, defense mechanism. There is always a way out. And remember this in Psalm 23, and I'm going to close on this. Remember this. When you're out there navigating, anytime you go on a trip, I pray that the first thing you do is pray. Amen? Amen. That you pray. And when you pray before you go on a trip, you have a reassurance that something it, it, that you have something in place. You have made arrangements, amen, for protection. Watch this. As you navigate through a city, state, county, whatever the case may be, anytime you navigate through obstacles, you are never by yourself as a child of God. Amen. You're never alone. In Psalm 23, beginning at verse number one, y'all know this, the Lord is my shepherd. shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leadeth me in the past of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk, watch this. You think you don't have help? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear. But if you think you don't have no help when it comes to navigating obstacles and stumbling blocks, do you truly believe that as a Christian? That you don't have any help. You have the greatest help. Amen. You have the best help. You have a help like no other can help you. Mm -hmm. He says, Hey, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no, fear no evil. Why not? Because as I run into these obstacles, so come up on these obstacles, I recognize that the Lord thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort, they comfort me. Uh -huh. We have no excuse to be running into as many obstacles as we run into and allow them to trip us up in life. No excuse. If we keep our mind focused on the Lord, be observant, be vigilant, Recognize that I don't just have a natural self building and defense against this. God is always going to give me a way around, over, through, or something, this obstacle, this uh, stomach block. And I have a help like no other help could help. I have Jesus the Christ. If you remember those things, if you apply those things, when you come up against an obstacle, you say, Brother Bishop, that's a lot to remember. No, it ain't. Mm -mm. Stay focused. Recognizing. I don't have anything naturally built in me to help me to overcome it. Mm -mm. If I just go against myself, I'm going to fall. Yep. Recognize also that God is going to give me a way out. Since he knows that there are 500 obstacles there, 500 stumbling blocks, there's going to be one way that looks different. There's going to be one way that looks different. That's God's way. He said, hey, here's your way out. Uh -huh. You got all those exits over there. You got one hole. Take the hole. Amen. God is offering you a way out. And recognize that when you come up against obstacles, dealing with obstacles and uh, stumbling blocks, you are not alone. Even if you go through the shadow of the battle of death, he says, Thou, thou art with me. 